Hi everyone, my name is Kate. Um, I wrote a book called The Storyteller, uh, which was published last year, uh, and I am trying to post reviews of books on about a weekly basis, and mostly failing, but uh, it's just over a week since the last one. And I'm here today to talk about a book called Last Exit to Brooklyn, which I had heard of, but never knew anything about, had never considered reading at all. And a good friend lent me his copy, which is this copy. It's a very, very battered paperback um, from the, it's a 1960s paperback. And he lent it to me and said, this was the forma forming book of my life. And don't destroy this copy, but I'm letting you read it because I trust you. Uh, so I've been reading this, this copy of Last Exit to Brooklyn with great care, terrified it was going to fall apart in my hands. Uh, but it seems not to have done. And, um, and I wanted to talk to you about it today. So this is a book that was first published in the US in 1964. Uh, it was then published in the UK in 66. Uh, it was the first novel by Hubert Selby Jr. Um, and, it, um, and it caused a huge furore when it was, when it was first published. So in the UK, it was uh, prosecuted for the publishers were prosecuted for obscenity in the uh, in 1966 1967 um, and and found guilty so this was considered in the 1960s to be an obscene book and I came to it with with this understanding because this this edition is prefaced by a, a note from the publishers talking about all of the difficulties they went through before that appeal was finally overturned in 1968 um, and also a, an introduction by Anthony Burgess, which was clearly designed to say, this is a book of serious literary value. It is not just obscene and likely to, to deprave, uh, the words they used then, um, deprave uh, young minds and female minds. And this is partly, I found that historically fascinating. So only 50 years ago, there were um, court cases being brought in the UK against books which were considered to be obscene. When the jury was selected for this, they said it had to be an all-male jury because no woman could possibly read this book. And this was the late 1960s. So that, that context was all very, very interesting to me. Um, and the introduction set up the book in a particular way uh, because it was, uh, because it had this background um, the publishers clearly in this in this new edition after the case was overturned set out to say this is really a book of very serious literary merit uh, and it has this um, this bizarre to modern readers introduction which I'll just read you read you a little bit of it um, so the fact that the director of public prosecutions initially refused though invited to take action over last exit to Brooklyn may convince its new readers that not all our public guardians are repressive or frivolous, although they did under pressure finally bring a crown case. It is the frivolous mind that responds with pious horror to distasteful subject matter and ignores the genuinely moral purpose for which the subject matter is deployed. Look into the repressive mind and you will see fear or obsession or both. The mature and well-balanced mind is, when shocked at revelations of human depravity or social sickness, concerned with making that shock fire a reforming zeal or at least stroke, stoke compassion. Repression does not come into it. Rather, the need is felt to extend sympathy by publicising the bad news, broadcasting the agony. 50 years ago, and those people were still writing things like that. Um, so I came to this book having read this introduction. Uh, I tend to read introductions. Um, and I had no idea what I was uh, expecting. It is, it's known as a novel. It's not actually a novel. It's a collection of um, four or five long short stories, almost, almost novellas, all set in Brooklyn in the 50s, 60s. Uh, in very, very poor working class uh, lives. Um, it's, a, it's a sort of revolving cast of characters who turn up in each other's stories, but individual stories are focused on particular characters. Um, it hit the obscenity radar uh, because there is a huge amount of violence, uh, sort of gang violence, um, drug use, uh, sex, uh, homosexuality, which of course was still considered remarkably as, as depravity in Britain in the 60s. 
And it's a very, it's a very realist book. And actually the introduction puts it in the tradition of Dickens. They're, they're clearly trying to make the case for this as very serious literature, the like, like Dickens. Um, and it's written in a very, in a very interesting style. So, so Hubert Selby Jr., about whom I know nothing beyond this book, um, writes this book in, uh, in slang a lot of the time. Uh, he ignores a lot of the conventions of grammar. Uh, there are no apostrophes anywhere in the book, which took me a little while to get used to, but then I did. Um, and it's, it's all very realist. But what he doesn't do, and, he, and he's telling these hugely violent, unpleasant uh, stories, what he doesn't do is really set out to titillate his reader by describing the violence in a way that is artistic. Um, instead, he just puts it down on the page as though that's just how it is and there's no reason to be surprised or shocked by it at all. And I suppose that was what was um, most exciting from a literary point of view about this book when it was when it was first published. And I just want to read you a little section of this because... I was, I was surprised by this. It wasn't what I was expecting. So maybe you will be as well, or maybe you're better educated and you will know better. But this is the opening paragraph of a story called Tralala. Um, and uh, it opens like this. Tralala was 15 the first time she was laid. There was no real passion, just diversion. She hung out in the Greeks, which is a bar, with the other neighbourhood kids. Nothing to do. Sit and talk listen to the jukebox, drink coffee, bum cigarettes, everything a drag. She said yes. In the park, three or four couples finding their own tree in grass. Actually, she didn't say yes. She said nothing. Tony or Vinny or whoever it was just continued. They all met later at the exit. They grinned at each other. The guys felt real sharp. The girls walked in front and talked about it. They giggled and alluded. Tralala shrugged her shoulders. Getting laid was getting laid. Why all the bullshit? She went to the park often. She always had her pick. The other girls were willing but played games. They liked to tease and giggle. Tralala didn't fuck around. Nobody likes a cock teaser. Either you put out or you don't, that's all. And it goes it goes on in that sort of style. Uh, so you can see why you can see why people um who wanted to be shocked found it found it shocking. But it's it's a really interesting book. And it's um it's very, it was hard for me, having read the introduction, talking about how moral the purpose of the book was, to, to see it with anything other than that moral purpose behind it. But I think, I think that probably is true to a certain extent. So each story has a biblical quotation at the beginning of it, an Old Testament quotation. And it's almost as though it's laying out for you, um, this is sort of the Sodom and the Gomorrah of the modern of a modern American life in this poor area of Brooklyn that's, um, that the wealthy uh, literary people never go to and that are shocked by to hear it. And it's, it's a book, it's, as I say, it's, it's full of violence. It's full of, um, I mean, there are, there are gang, gang rapes, there's torture, there's um, a lot of uh, gang violence in which uh, mostly men are killing each other. There's a lot of what we would very easily labelled now as as abuse of children, uh, sexual, physical, verbal. Um, so in a sense, it's a, it's a really horrible book, and I found myself quite uh, quite upset uh, as I read as I read parts of it. Um, and it's there are, there's nothing good. There's nothing good happens in in this world. Uh, there is in the final uh, story, which is called Coda. Uh, it opens with a, a woman called Ada who is sitting on a bench and looking at the sunshine and enjoying the sunshine and seeing the buds coming out on the trees. And as I read the beginning of that story, it suddenly, it put all of the rest into, into uh, it sort of highlighted how violent and unpleasant the rest of the book had been. And it was almost a relief suddenly to find someone who was enjoying something in nature and enjoying something in the world around her. Um, and it felt as though he, uh, the author was almost saying, this, this can be redeemed. There is something good in here. After all of the violence and all of the Old Testament horror, there is something good here. Um, but then by the end of that paragraph, it turns out that she is mad, never changes her clothes, uh, is self-harming all of the time in the background. Even this one character who is allowed very briefly to enjoy something in the world 
is then uh, completely um, undermined, and we can't and we can't believe in her either. Um, so it wasn't an easy read. Uh, it was a a worthwhile read. It was a surprising read. It wasn't what I was expecting, and I think it's a really interesting, good book. Um, but as I say, not not what I was expecting at all. I'm grateful to the friend who lent me his prized copy, which I will return tomorrow in perfect condition. Um, yeah, I learned a lot. It wasn't comfortable. Uh, if you've read it, let me let me know what you think. Uh, there's also a film which I haven't seen. I don't know anything about. Um, yeah, I'd love to know what you think. It surprised me. I don't really quite know what else to say. But thank you for listening. <laughs>